We now want to look into formalizing the synthesis of logic circuits. So to implement a logic function into a circuit, we're going to follow these three steps. We're going to first fill in a truth table for the desired logic function. We're secondly going to write a logic function as a sum of products or a product of sums. These will be defined in the following slides. And then finally, we will use AND or NOT gates to implement the function. So although the above procedure will not usually produce the minimal implementation, in other words, you'll be using more gates than necessary, it will produce the proper function. In a subsequent lesson, we'll look at actually minimizing the, the expression. And we'll use the Carnot map to do that. We're going to look at an example. Uh, and that, uh, that the example being an exclusive OR gate. So if you recall, if you've been watching some of these other lessons, when we um, presented some of the additional gates beyond an OR and or NOT gate, uh, two of them were the exclusive OR and exclusive NOR. And although we showed the truth table, we did not uh, show how those were implemented using the AND, OR, and, and uh, NOT gates. So now we're going to try to implement that. So here's our truth table. It's already been filled out. Output is true only when either A or B is true, but not when both are. So <clears throat> first we're going to look at a sum of products, or SOP for short. So an expression made up of a sum of what's called min terms. So we're going to have the a couple definitions here. We have sum of products, min terms, uh, and then we'll have two more uh, following here on the next slide. So a min term is a product or an anding of inputs which corresponds to one of the true entries in the truth tables in the truth table. So in this case, a and b um, or a b uh, equal to zero one, in other words, the second entry in the table, and a b equal to ten, which is the third entry of the table. These are the two uh, entries where the output is true. The sum of product expression will be true whenever one of its min terms is true and uh, because each of the min terms in the expression are added or summed together so and another point is that a min term will be true a given any given min term will be true for only one entry in the truth table so for this uh, exclusive or function the function f is equal to a and b Okay, come on. Oh, there we go. Uh, I'm sorry. It's going to be a not and b plus a b not. So a not b corresponds to the first corresponds to this entry here. Oops. No, come back here. No. Here we go. Okay, so this, it's this entry here and this entry here. So if, let's say if A, if A is 0 and B is 1, then we would have A naught and 1 plus A and B naught. And this would be equal to 1 and 1 plus 0 and 0 so it would be true and if a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 0 then we would have 1 not and 0 not plus 1 and b not and that would be 0 and 0 plus 1 and 1 which would be 1. And if we try any other combination of a and b, this function will evaluate to 0. Let's try, let's try for instance, 0 and 0 for a and b. If it was, if a was 0 and b was 0, then we would have 0 not and 0 plus 0 and 0 not. And that would still give us 0 and zero it would be false. And if you try one and one, you'll find the same thing. 
Okay, we can also implement the exclusive OR gate using what's called the product of sums. So we had the sum of products, or SOP, and now we have product of sums, or POSs. An expression made up of a product, or an anding, of max terms. Remember the sum of products was, um, was an oaring of min terms. So a max term is a summing of inputs which corresponds to one of the false entries. False as opposed to one of the true entries in the table. In this case, there are two entries when the, out, the function is false, and that is the entry 00, zero and the entry 11, one, one, right here and here. The product of sum expression will be false whenever one of its max terms is false. And that is because uh, we're going to take the product, we're going to take the, we're going to and all the max terms together. So it takes only one max term to be false in order for the expression to be uh, false. Just like it took only one min term to be true in order for the function to be true because there we were doing a summing of min terms. And also note that a max term will be false for only one entry in the truth table. This corresponds to the reverse for min terms. A min term will be true for only one entry in the truth table. So uh, for our exclusive OR function, we have f is equal to a, so we have a naught plus b naught that corresponds to this guy right here. So that's a naught plus b naught. And then a plus b is going to correspond to this one here. Oh, I did that backwards. Sorry. A plus B and A not plus B not. So uh, notice that for A plus B, if we have if we have A, let's do try these out here. If we, A is zero and B is zero, then we would have A not which is one plus B not which is one. And that's going to be times 0 plus 0. And so that'll be 1 and 0 or 0. And we'll see the same thing if they're both 1. But if we try A equal to, say, 1 and B equal to 0, oops, then we would have A naught is 0 plus B naught is 1 times A, which is 1, plus b, which is 0, and this will be 1 times 1 equal to 1, which is exactly what we have right here. If we try the other two terms, we'll find that um, they will be, they will evaluate to what's in the table. Okay, here's another slide just to try to reinforce and clarify the min terms and max terms. So we're going to practice writing two example expressions, f1 and f2. Here are the truth tables for them. Now what I've added is uh, I have there, th there are three inputs uh, in this case uh, and the binary code is, is listed right here. And, and I don't know if you noticed on the previous slides I didn't mention it, but we use some shorthand when we mention min terms and max terms. So the um, the digit or the, the decimal that um, that the binary code corresponds to here is shown on the on the very left. So zero, you know, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so we're going to have for the min terms we will um, we will refer to a min term uh, for the zero 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 entry to be m zero, for the zero zero one entry m one, but it'll be a, a lowercase m for min, and if we have a max term. Uh, at 0, 0, 0, we'll, we'll label that capital M0, capital M1, capital M2, so forth. So that gives us a shorthand for writing this. So let's see 
uh, let's write or have the answer for the first one here. Let's see if we understand this. So for F1, we notice that we have zero, we have ones here, here, and here. And when we write a, a um, sum of products expression, we're going to be summing min terms. And the min terms are these entries at 2, 4, and 5. And so the shorthand is to put little m, oh, wait a minute, I have a typo. So this is actually m2 here. Yeah, so little m2 plus little m4 plus little m5. Now we can also write this as a product of sums, and now we're going to be taking the product of max terms. The max terms are going to be the, uh, the zero entries. So that's going to be at M0, capital M1, capital M3, capital M6, and capital M7. Let's see if I did that right there. That, that one looks right. Okay. Now, if I want to write this all out, what this would be would be for the min term M2. Notice it corresponds to 0, 1, 0. So that would be, remember the min terms are true for that entry. So that means I need to have, if this was A, B, C, then I'd have to have A bar B C bar, right? Because plugging in 0, 1, 0 into that expression would give me 1, 1, 1. I'm anding all of those together. All right? M4, uh, min term 4 is going to be A B bar C bar. And M5 is going to be A, B bar, C. Now for the uh, max terms, our entry capital M0 is going to be A plus B plus C. Now remember for, our, for that entry, which is 0, 0, 0, we're trying to get the max term to evaluate to 0, not to 1. So you might be tempted to write a bar plus b bar plus c bar so that when you plug in 0, 0, 0, you'll get a 1. Now that's what you do for min terms. For max terms, you're trying to get the max term to evaluate to 0. So um, let's go on to m1. m1 will be a plus b plus c bar because C is 1 right here. Let's do one more. M3 will be A, uh, A plus B bar plus C bar. And then we'd have the M6 term here as well. Okay. Now let's uh, see if we can write the expression now for F2. So for F2, uh, if we're writing a sum of products, we're looking for the entries that are 1 right here. We got six of them. So it'll be little m0 plus little one, m1 plus m4, m5, m6, m7. And if we write the product of some terms, then we have just two entries right here. And so those will be capital M2 times, or ended with capital M3. And notice that we have these two, the 2 and the 3 are the two uh, indices that are not present in the sum of products, because there we have 0, 1, then we skip to 4, 5, and 6, and 7. Okay, let's look at actually implementing uh, using these sum of products and product of sum expressions to implement an exclusive OR. So I've rewritten what we found for the sum of products for our exclusive OR. It was A bar B plus A B bar. And here I've implemented it with uh, AND, OR, and NOT gates. And then here we have our uh, uh, product of sum term, which is uh, equal to a naught plus B naught, the quantity ANDed with A plus B. And here we've implemented it again with AND, OR, and NOT gates. Hopefully that is 
obvious to you at this point how we can put that together. So that implements this exclusive OR gate. Now, uh, we can't be sure whether these rep representations for the XOR gate are minimized or not. We don't yet have the tools to check this, and we will do that in the next lesson. But we can do one thing. We can apply De Morgan's theorem uh, and at least get a different rendering. So what I've done is I've taken the product of some expression here, or implementation, and what we notice is that this here is, right, I can put the bubbles right at the, going into the OR gate, and now I can, I can bubble push those through. And when I push them through, this is gonna turn into a AND gate, and the bubble will show up at the output. So that will give us a NAND right here. So at least it's three gates instead of uh, the five gates before, but they're all three different gates still. So we could go one step further. Whoops, where'd that go? Oh. We could go one step further, and we could take that, um, that product of some implementation that had converted the um, the knots and the or to a NAND right here. And now we can actually say, hey, we can implement this with all NAND gates. So this is just copied right over. This right here is our AND gate. We just took a NAND and then inverted. And then this here is our OR gate. Remember, it's it's this right here. If you bubble push uh, through, you will end up, like say the two bubbles on the right, you push them through, the gate becomes an OR, and you end up with a double bubble at the output, which is equal to an OR. Okay, so um, now that, that has six gates, but the nice thing about it is all the gates are the same. So typically when you when you get an IC package, an integrated circuit that has a particular family of logic, a type of logic gate in it, they'll have multiple gates in one IC. And so, whereas if you have only three gates, but they're all three different gates, then you're going to have to have, to have three integrated circuits, and you'll have a lot of unused gates. Uh, but if you use all NAND gates, then you're likely to have less ICs because typically you'll get four um, in a in a in a 14 pin uh, leaded package, you'll get four two input NAND gates in uh, in one package. So in this case, it would take two ICs. But then again, of course, we can buy exclusive OR ICs as well. So that might be a moot point. Lastly, I uh, just want to point out that the sum of products, SOP, and the product of sums, POS, are said to be canonical forms. So given a truth table, a canonical form may be implemented, though it may not be a minimum implementation. And we will be looking at minimization next.